five still seems to be the problem. Go ahead, make my day. This is the T.J. Trout Show. Spreading freedom and democracy. More like spreading greed and gonorrhea. On 96.3 News Radio, KKOB. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Glad you're uh, here with us. Welcome to Seed Sack Eve. Ooh. You going to show up? Yes, I want to try to. We can try to. That's not good enough, man. I'll buy you some. I will show some up. Some red chili rubbed ribs. You heard him. He said it. He will not. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jesse, I haven't even asked you yet, but. I, there's there's not much I won't do for uh, red chili ribs or like a beer. Like it's yeah. pretty 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 easy. Well, but they, okay, there so, all right. The, the event is sponsored by Dos Equis, so they're gonna be, right. the, they're gonna be there. We got beer. We got we got food. We got we got the band, uh, the Duke City Swamp Coolers. We're gonna have the uh, we're gonna have the um, the pumpkin with the biggest pumpkin weigh in. The first thing we're gonna do, probably that's probably gonna happen around five thirty. Quarter six. Then we're gonna judge the uh, carving contest to whoever did the most uh, creative carving. Then we got the band going on, and then we're going to light all the pumpkins up at uh, dark, dark, dusk. So cool, yeah. We're not we're not going to light each one up separately. We're going to throw gasoline on all of them and just like. So I saw Gabe's <laughs> pumpkin, and it's giving me nightmares already. Oh, 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 just, that thing walks around that room, man. Did you see? I saw it. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I mean, know. It's like it's not just a pumpkin; it's a display. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. It, it's. Uh, a menagerie. I don't know what it, I don't know what you yeah. call it. Yeah, it's it's something. But uh, yeah, it's got like dead animal bones in it. It's got a wig on the thing. It's got a jester hat on the pumpkin. It's yeah, it's bizarre. So very, I agree. Yeah, Jesse Heron, owner of the Painted Lady Bed and Brew at uh, Bellamont Twelfth Street, pass by you almost every day going to work. Well, Are not you, per- not Always, you, not, yeah. not you personally, your business. <laughs> so of course, Cody Polston in here from uh, Southwest Ghost Hunters Association. Hey, how many books you got out now? I mean, oh god, oh god too I know, many. but but you got something new though, right? Yeah. So the uh, uh, let's see, Murder and Mayhem and Tombstone is coming out April first, which is weird because they gave April. me the release date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before they gave me the cover proof, and that normally is the other way around. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then okay. working on another ghost book and another freaky history book for Albuquerque. Okay. So. Tombstone's interesting. I mean, you that, that's that's steeped in history, I would imagine. Even oh, yeah. even more, more more than ghostisms, it's a, it's so historical. Yeah, we talked about that before and my my mind has been changed about a lot of that stuff since I've finished the book. Cuz really? I, I went I knew I was going to have an opinion on we were talking about like Ike Clanton and all that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I want to do that first. I want to put his his opinion of what happened, you know, back in the day. Because I knew once I started researching it heavier, that might change, and it and it did. <laughs> so, so, so you are you more sympathetic now? To no, the cl- hell no. Oh no, no. Oh, oh. So, no. so. I, I, it, that that whole thing with the the gunfight, the OK Corral. Yeah. It's much more than what you see in the movie. There's buildup that happens years before, and it's just things happening and happening until it builds up to that event. You yeah. know, and. Um, a lot of the political corruption, he was right in the middle of it. And yeah. it was, it's kind of like, you know, the whole, the people saying that the vote was stolen and all that. Yeah. Imagine that back in the 1880s and yeah. the Democrats are the ones that are trying to steal the votes. Yeah. And that's kind of what was yeah. going on. Interesting. Yeah. Right. So can, can I quote uh, Paul Andrew Hutton and see if this is accurate? Because I said to him once, the uh, history professor at UNM, also he's a movie consultant. Right. He said, uh, I said to him, man, well, like I forget who I was talking about. He he was a real ba- really a bad dude, wasn't he? I think maybe Onate or somebody. And he, and he says, "TJ, they were all bad dudes back then." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every one of them. Every, in, in one way or another, they all yeah. are. But, yeah. yeah. So Jesse, in the 1880s, because that's when what when, when was uh, when was the Painted Lady? Uh, uh, 1881. 1881. Yes. Okay, it was built then. And, Pretty sure. Yeah, and it actually it wasn't originally a, a, a brothel. Or, or was it close to being originally a brothel? It was close. To, uh, it it might have originally been just a lodging house. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when, once a sawmill moved in across the street yeah. right around 1903, I think it just positioned itself because of, you know, you had this uh, ratio of men to women that was probably 10 men to every single lady. And it's on the outskirts of Albuquerque. It's mm-hmm. right there. So I think they converted it into. So was it, the, was it actually across 
city limit li- the line of the city? Yeah, back so, back then it was. Yeah, <laughs> it's like our twelfth and Bellamo right yeah, now. It's yeah, like no, right it's there in the middle far. of yeah. right there in the middle of the city right now. But see, that's important <clears throat> because when Albuquerque outlawed prostitution in 1915, yeah, um, Old Town and that section going east where his building is, yeah, they weren't included in the township, so that that was kind of questionable. Yeah, and so all the prostitutes that were here, like literally, probably what five hundred feet away from us, over and in you Civic can see Plaza, right there. Yeah, yeah. Where was uh, that's where they went. Yeah. <laughs> they went to Old Town and to all those places, Mountain Road, all of that near the Sawmill District. Wow, no kidding. Yeah. So again, de- describe to me, Jesse, again the area right around that time. Uh, so uh, what was happening in eighteen eighty? Then what happened when the Sawmill moved in? Well, you got, you know, Old Town obviously founded 1706. 1880, yeah. the railroad comes, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. They build the tracks a mile and a half east of the river because back then the Rio Grande would flood, which we've all seen it now. You can almost walk right across it. So it's, it's tough to imagine it back then. Yeah. So they build the railroad here, which becomes known as New Town. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, the red light district started in Old Town. Then it moves to downtown Albuquerque, Hell's Half Acre, where the Hyatt was and Lizzie and McGrath's restaurant in the Hyatt. That's okay. where Lizzie McGrath had her vine cottage. All right, all right. Describe to me Hell's Half Acre. So it's just a portion. It was back then. It was what, what is Copper Avenue now between yeah. like Second and Third Street. So when the Hyatt was there, now it's the Clyde. We all probably locals remember McGrath's restaurant. That was named after Lizzie McGrath, who sure. was Albuquerque's most famous madam. Her mm-hmm. vine cottage was right where they built the hotel. Okay, so it's not standing anymore. They 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 uh, raised... the restaurant's still in there. It's I think it's now called Carrie's. Yeah. Uh, so they rebranded it. But when it was McGrath's, and they changed it in 2011, they turned it into Fork, like F O R Q U E. Got fancy. Right, right, they, right. They pulled down the McGrath sign and yeah. they did this whole like. Funeral service, not to irk Lizzie's ghost. So they had a horse-drawn uh, hearse, and they put the sign in a casket and like had bagpipers, <laughs> nice. and it was right. it was pretty cool. It yeah. was cool. Just what what, what year was that? Um, I think it was twenty ten or twenty eleven. Okay, okay. I do, I, There's photos. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah. So, um, how did your area change when the sawmill came in? I mean, it was it was huge. That was the biggest industry back then. So the American, how many people? How many people were uh, employed by that thing? I have no idea. It was a lot less, yeah, less than hundreds. The railroad. Yeah. But yeah, it was busy. It was the American Lumber Company right there. So back then, 12th Street dead ended at the entrance to the sawmill, and so the Bed and Brew, the the back then this was known as the Swastika Saloon, mm-hmm. uh, was right there. Basically, yeah. there was a trolley line, electric trolley line that ended right there at the entrance. To the yeah. sawmill for the workers. So you got a bunch of workers pretty much across the street from you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, they just got done off their job. They're 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 tired. They're sweaty. They're or filthy. Lunch break. Yep. Or lunch break, and they want they they want a beer. They want something, and they and they want a lady. I was told by somebody who was with us at the ghost hunt that there was over twenty four hundred employees at that sawmill. Is that possible? That could be. Somebody I mean, they came around from Google all over the now. region. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where they got the wood from. Well, Sandia's from the mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Um, Depends on what, you, what you're talking about. I mean, where'd you get the wood from? <laughs> <laughs> um, when did you discover it was haunted? Um, the first time I drove, well, I've been driving by working downtown for years. Yeah. And I never even, I never noticed it, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. I noticed the house that was on the corner because it had a cool mural. Yeah. But I never even noticed it. So I discovered the property in 2013 in October, and I it was on the market. It was for sale. And in October, so a few weeks later, I'm standing in front of it taking photos. Yeah. And a guy walks down the sidewalk and starts talking to me, and he said, are you thinking about buying this property? And I said, yeah. And he said, do you know the history? And I said, I know a little bit. And he looked at me, and he said, you don't know Beep, bless word, right? And so <laughs> right. I started, I was like, okay. So he's a relative of the family that built it back when it was a brothel and saloon. They're still there. They're, they're st- still around. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they're still around. Yeah, they're, cool. it's, I, I mean, it's it's public knowledge, I think. It's on the website. It's, well, how, how did the family feel when you came in and bought it? Well, I think they, and I've, I've met a lot of them over the years. Yeah. 
and they're still living like right next door. One of the one of the relatives. And yeah. She and I have a great relationship, and she's done a lot of the cleansings at the property. She's got a successful business as a psychic and medium. Oh, I mean, cleansings, getting the bad things. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. but I think that they. I mean, I kind of brought it back to what it may have looked like when it was in the eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds. So when I got it, it had like shag carpet and the drop ceiling and linoleum tile. So yeah. we. Pulled all that out of there. We have the original wood floors. Yeah. There's there's blood stains in some of the rooms. There's weird markings on the floor. The original ceiling, you know, the beadboard, paint blue colored ceiling. So it's brought back to kind of what it might have looked like in its heyday. Okay, we got uh, both Jesse Heron in here, owner of the Painted Lady Bed and Brew at Bellum on 12th Street, where we did our ghost hunt. Cody Polston, who was there for the ghost hunt, Southwest Ghost Hunters Association and author. And uh, we'll continue with this conversation after Eddie Haskell with Traffic, 96.3 News Radio, KKOB. Hold on. All right, we're back. Thanks for listening. Uh, again, Seed Sack Eve. we got Seed Sack going on at El Pinto uh, tomorrow from 5 till dark. Cannot wait. we got the pumpkin weigh-in. we got the uh, carving contest, and we're doing the glow, and we got Duke City Swamp Coolers out there. And then, then on Tuesday, Halloween Day, this is why these guys are in right now, uh, we're doing the uh, recording back, the the show that we recorded out at the uh, Painted Lady Bed and Brew at Bellamon 12th for uh, the ghost hunt. Did we find anything? We got a couple things. Don't say what. I'm not going to say what. <laughs> but we had a, we actually had a guy dedicated to recording, which is different this year. Yeah, Dale. Yeah. And so um, we got a couple things. Yeah. We, we okay. I I will say this. We got one definite. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. One. I think. Now there 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 was another really weird one we got. And you think we got three or two? I think we got two. Okay, to so do the I. third. I'm I'm skeptical on. Yeah, and I, and I, I don't want to tell any of the stories that you told on the on the uh, when we were out there because I, I, don't I do, do not. I told, yeah, I know. I, do not tell I, them I now because people people got to. I know. People got to. Them to tune in. We're not tune get, in. That's a I tease, get, man. I can't remember. Them. But you've had some crazy <laughs> crap go on at that place. Yeah. So I mean, it, I was there for almost. I mean, lived there for nine and a half years. I've been there for ten. I will. I will go as far as saying I can't believe that you're still there. I yeah. mean, because some of the stuff that happened to you is just too bizarre. I mean, it was cool the first few years. It was really cool. It was like oh, I wa- always wanted to live in a haunted house, and then now things are happening. Like since the first night there. Yeah. And then after eight and a half, nine years at that mark, it starts to get annoying. And it's like kind of, it, it's, you know, yeah. it's it wasn't as fun. It wasn't just, as yeah, cool. It's just, still fun to talk about. It's yeah. like daytime right now. So it's cool. But then when when they come out, it's like one or two in the morning, you're trying to sleep and it's, it's spooky. You know, it's not as... Well, well, all right. Nice. Now here's, here's a, th- a theoretical question for you. I've asked you this before. Does it have to be nighttime when we're looking for this stuff? Uh, no. It happens in daytime too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, but why, why, in general, do we go at night? I mean, we could go during the day, right? Well, it's quieter. Yeah. And well, uh, and that's that's the big reason why most of the time it's done at night. But and you have a tendency to notice more. Yeah. But um, you know, scare. I mean, and a lot of it's superstition. You know, yeah, you have yeah. the the whole thing with three o'clock being the time when the veil between the two worlds gets the thinnest, and the ghosts can come over and communicate. I don't know about that's, that. That's that's superstition, but mm, okay. that's there. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the wi- that's the witching hour, right? So it's, you know, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of ghost stories happening during the day. Um, yeah. I just did a thing for the Albuquerque Journal. We were talking about the ghost of Scarlet, a prostitute that haunts an alley in Old Town. Yeah. And uh, all the sightings of her predominantly in the day. There's a few at night, but most yeah. of them are during the What's day. What's she look like? Uh, well, she looks kind of, <laughs> the description I got, well, she kind of looks like a homeless person. Um, her <laughs> skin, sure, sure her not skin, she has person? skin damage. Yeah. Like she's been in the sun. She's a, a redhead. Yeah. Um, average looking. She's, she's not like amazingly beautiful or anything. Yeah. And is seen smoking. Oh. The weird thing is the vast majority of people that see her. Yeah. Are people that are smoking too. So, so she's making herself known to other people who smoke. And that's what it looks. And, sing, and men, sure. single men, or men with their wives in one case, yeah, um, being flirtatious, like trying to lure them back into the alley. And they're like, well, mm, "My wife's here. Leave me alone." Well, you know. So I'd go back there. Well, I know you would. <laughs> well, you would too, probably. She well, said, I went. To, I tried to do some EVP. To We out? got some cool EVPs yeah. actually. Oh, did you last weekend? Yeah. Uh, one is uh, a crying. Well, it sounds like a woman crying. Yeah. And there's another really clear one that seems to say, hello, who are you? Mm-hmm. 
And oh, uh, cool. but that's a male voice, so uh, it's kind of like kind of weird. Yeah. Okay. So what what what's the name of this uh, chick again? <laughs> Scarlet. We we Scar- call her Scar- yeah. Scarlet's a made up name yeah. just to identify her. Okay. We don't know who it actually mm. is. Okay. Do do you so you don't have any idea how old? We have how no old idea. It could but be like I'm guessing around the 1880s when Old Town was hopping, and the the alley was the alley yeah. they mentioned in the papers, okay. which was. Okay, because I'm wondering if, they, if she was wearing period dress or anything. Or... It's it's supposedly a dark blue or purple dress. It's not by itself, you know, stands out. Yeah. But she ties it up in the front, which yeah. back then would have been scandalous because she's showing her right. legs. Now you you have seen uh, Jesse. Uh, we got to take a break, but you have seen Apper. I mean, you've seen them appear in front of you. Once I saw a little girl by my bedside once. And the other times I've seen things that were not like a uh, apparition of like a human. They right, were weird. Don't go there. Don't go there. Weird stuff. This is a good story. Sorry. Teasing. That's right. <laughs> That's one of the best stories you told, man. <laughs> Some crazy stuff. Well, it's good times. Yeah. All right, we got to take a break. All right, uh, news and traffic coming up. Uh, we have uh, Jesse Heron in here, uh, Painted Lady Bed and Brew, and, of course, Cody Polson, Southwest Ghost Hunters. 96.3 News Radio, KKOB. Hold on. All right, we're back on uh, Seed Sack Eve. Remember that's going on t- tomorrow night? Or oh, tomorrow starting at 5 anyway at El Pinto. Everybody invited, of course. With us right now, Jesse Heron, owner of the Painted Lady Bed and Brew, Bellman 12, where we did our ghost hunt. Uh, we got Cody Polson here with us also from Southwest Ghost Hunters. Gaba. Yes. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Just What'd you getting have... in the spirit, man. Well, I, I get it. So you, did, would you, you saw what he did. Right? Yes, I did. That, that thing in the suitcase you left on. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. self expression, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> I what I was feeling. I, I appreciate your art. I have a, I have a few names and numbers, Gabe, that you could call. I if you bet need, you don't. I'm sure you have you accounts with them, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have these fine gentlemen in here. You know, we've been having this conversation, yes. and I, I know what you're like, so you probably got something. I've been listening to a bit. Of, I just wanted to ask both of you guys, Cody and Jesse, something personal, if I could. Okay. So with your backgrounds of what you've experienced and what you've been doing, what do each of you expect upon your death to happen? <laughs> Oh, you wanna, you want what do you believe is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, what do you think, and, and has that influenced you, your experience? Um, so I've, I've got some theories on this and I, I'm not religious, but I, I think, and there's something weird about the property, the bed and brew, like right from the beginning, it just was calling to me. And I think that's why all these spirits are still there. There's just something about it. I don't know whether that's a portal or there's like something weird, but Mm -hmm. I feel like if something happened right now and I died and there's this bright light, there's a light. Okay. I don't think I would go into it. I think that I, I'm in the the camp of maybe there's unfinished business or I'm not ready. I have too much. I've, I've, I got a mortgage. I got like, you know, I got <laughs> to run a business. I call, it's yeah. like that. So I don't think I would go into the light and cross over. I think I would stay here. And whether the light ever comes back and you go to this next level or whatever, I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I can, I, I don't know. So I don't, I don't know what happens, but I, I don't think that there is, I don't believe in a hell. I don't believe that. Um, I don't know. I, I I think that the 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 ghosts or the spirits that are at the property. I have a theory that maybe if you are bad in life, and you're killed or you die, and you're maybe you're scared, you're going to go down below. You're going into mm. like a hell. I think that you're not going to cross over because you're scared of what that might be. You're mm. worried about how you <laughs> acted, yeah. so you hang out in this. In between, which is, I think, you know, something that's why we can kind of see these ghosts on occasion. Uh, they haven't left. Okay. They're still here in this, like, in-between place. Wow. Okay, buddy boy, your turn. Yeah. I <laughs> don't think any, anything's going to happen. I think I'm when I'm gone, I'm gone. Sounds like my dad. Um, you know, it's... So then how do you approach your work? I mean, do you just, do you tend to be kind of a, a nihilist about it? I think, well, that you know, it's just such and such. I, I, mean, I look... See, people often under, misunderstand the word skeptic. They mm-hmm. think it means disbelief, and it really doesn't. It's, I haven't made up my mind. If we're talking about buying a vacuum cleaner and I say I'm skeptical, okay, okay you know, I'm going to read the reviews, peer reviews, if we're talking science, and I'm going to look at both sides before deciding to buy the vacuum. Being skeptical means, I, yeah, I've, I've had weird things happen, and I've talked to a lot of people that have weird things happen, and but at the same time, can I definitively prove that any of those things are real? No. So I'm kind of stuck in the middle, and that's where kind of where I stay, mm. you know. But yeah, it would be cool if you, I mean, if I could be a ghost, I'd travel the world, you know. I'd, I'd go see Paris, and I'd go see you know 
the Egyptian pyramids. And can you but define I just one experience that would just could totally convince you you'd be sold? You'd be like, okay, that's the consumer reports of ghost. I'm, 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 I'm there. All right. Well, here, you know, here's the thing. Um, I've been doing this for 35 years. And within that time, people have died. Yeah. And we've always had the promise, if you die, come back and let me know. Yeah. None of them have come back and let me know. So, and that's my why I'm skeptical. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Gabba? Yeah. Always you, the provocateur. I'm here for you, TJ. <laughs> I'm watching you. All right. We're not done yet. We're going we're gonna to continue this conversation on the other side. Uh, we got uh, Eddie Haskell with Traffic, 96.3 News Radio, KKOB. Hold on. All right. We're back. Thanks for listening. Again, on this uh, SeaTac Eve we got uh, Jesse Heron in here, owner of the Painted Lady Bed and Brew at Bellamont 12, where we did the ghost hunt. We're going to rebroadcast that on uh, Halloween. And uh, Cody Polson in here, Southwest Ghost Hunters. See, I, you didn't get my my take on the whole thing, what Gabe said. Okay. I think it'd be fun to haunt somebody. Yeah. It'd be fun to scare the crap out of somebody. Hell yeah. If you could do it. At least for a while. Agreed. I yeah. think that's why they're they're <laughs> sticking around, because it's fun. They don't have to live within the, the rules of yeah. this this. World. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the two of you were talking. So did you relate another story to him that you, that you didn't uh, say for the ghost hunt? Yeah. So so Cody, I've known the name of Cody for a long time. The name of Cody. The name of Cody, and he's been he's like a local uh, legend. Yeah. And one of the first the first month I was in the in at the bed and brew sleeping in there, and I'm reading his book out loud in bed. Ghost of Old Town Albuquerque is yeah. written by Cody Polston. There you go. And it might have even been the Scarlet story. I don't remember, but I'm reading it out loud and you feel this energy come into the room and it feels like somebody lies on, on the bed. And I'm like, I, you can feel it. It kind of feels like a, like when a cat jumps on the bed, that kind of like ba yeah. barely moving it, but yeah. it had like the mass, like the size of a human. And as I'm like looking, I, I turn over to the right. So I hear I had a little nightstand next to my bed. And it was on on wheels on casters, and I hear the wheels move. And I had a lamp with like yeah. a pole chain. And as I turn my head, I see the pole chain like the chain like swinging because it, it moved and it moved yeah. on its own. As I was reading Cody Polston's Ghosts of Old Town Albuquerque <laughs> book out loud at the haunted former brothel. Well, that was right after you moved in. Yeah, it was like the first, uh, wow. it was right around Halloween time. So, you know, it, it was like, yeah, just like maybe a couple of weeks. And I was like, wow, it, this place is, here we go. Yeah. Wow. So you guys had a connection you didn't even know you had? Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. Isn't so, that wild? Look at that. Yeah. I've so. been waiting nine and a half years to tell him. Now there you, you go. Yeah. Hey, let, let me ask you, why were you reading it out loud? <laughs> oh, I, I, I was... With uh, someone at the time. Oh, okay. But well, that's fine. And so we were reading it out loud. Okay. And, so there was yes. somebody. Okay. That's yes, fine. I'm not a weirdo. I'll say no more. I'll say no more. I won't about. ask any more questions about that. So. All right. Uh, what else? Are we done? I don't know. Um, so uh, how can people stay at your place if they want to stay at your place? So we get a lot of locals. Locals are welcome. Go to bedandbrew.com or breakfastisoverrated.com and just book it right there. What's a bed and brew? How different is that from a bed and breakfast? Well, I, I sleep through breakfast. I don't know how to cook. <laughs> if it was a bed and breakfast, you'd be getting like bagel bites or yeah. Pop-Tarts. So right. we do a, a local or like a, a hoppy hour Yeah. instead of the awkward uh, bed and breakfast um having, you know, strangers having eggs in the morning. Yeah. We do. We share a beer at happy hour, 5.05 to 6 every day. So huh. it's now open for locals, too. You can claim a free ticket if you go to ghostlightsaloon.com. That's what we're calling the little trolley car on the property. So claim a free ticket. Show up. Come have a beer with us. Yeah, sounds or good. Or stay the night. All right. Cool. You say you're not doing anything for Halloween this year? No, just this show. Just just in here. Just coming in here, then you're, good, then you're going, just hanging. Yeah, well, um, on November 4th, I'm doing a author fair at Loma de Colorado Library okay. in Rio Rancho. All right, cool. So, you, you, got any new, you got any new plans, any new books that you're I thinking got, about? Yeah, I'm doing another Albuquerque history book. I'm also working on, yeah, I do this. I, I, I go on so many different projects because I get bored with one or I get writer's block and I'll yeah. switch. So I'm doing another ghost story book, which will have the last remaining stuff that I know of. Uh, including oh, yeah. Jesse's Place. Yeah, yeah. will be in that one. And then um, my first horror novel, I started kind of writing really? on every once in a while. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Western horror novel. Western horror novel. Yeah. Something different. Cool. All right. Gentlemen, good seeing you. Again, uh, Cody cool. Polson, Southwest Ghost Hunters. 
Jesse Heron, owner of the Painted Lady Bed and Brew, Bellamy on 12th Street. Cool uh, Christopher Lee uh, Dracula yeah. teaser, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right, gentlemen, uh, we got traffic coming up. 96.3 News Radio, KKB. Hold on.